Hey folks, we're going to set up the X-Tool F2 Ultra UV laser. And I have searched around for videos showing me how to set it up and I can't find any. I found some that are real flashy going through the things that it can do, which is awesome. And I'll figure that out later and share it with you folks. But I need to know how to set it up. So what we're going to do is use this quick start guide that came with it. And we're going to see if we can set it up with this. So if you purchase one, and I'm not trying to sell you one because X-Tool didn't give me this. I bought it myself. But if you purchase one and you need to know how to set it up, come back to this video because we're going to run setup. We're going to do a calibration. And then we're going to do a test project. All right, folks. Let's get right to it. All right. For step one we got to detach the field lens protector. And that is right here. And the lens that comes with it attached is a surface lens. It also comes with a subsurface lens. And anytime you're not using it, you want to put that cover back on. Step two, connect the touch screen controller. Here's the touch screen controller. And it attaches around in the back, right here. Okay, here on the back, we have the uh, touch screen controller port. We have a quick switch port, which is a foot pedal you can purchase separately, and I don't have one. Uh, this port's reserved. This is a fire safety port for an additional kit you can purchase that I also do not have. This is the key port to turn the machine on. Without the key, the machine don't work. This is the power port, and then this is a port for some tubing that goes with the fire safety set. So we're just going to connect up the touch screen controller and move on from there. Hopefully that's in there. So step three, connect the power supply. And we're just going to connect it up right here. There we go. Step four, uh, we're going to install the exhaust, which I've already ran some tubing for so I can connect it into my uh, original exhaust system. This will be hard to see, but I'm just going to put this hose inside of the one that leads to my original exhaust. All right, there we go. We got it in. I had to get a little rough with it. And we're just going to take it. Connect it right there. And now that we have completely covered up where the key goes, right here, the next step is to put the key in the slot. And remember, you have to have this to operate the machine. And the machine only comes with one key. The F2, uh, the uh, F1 Ultra uh, came with two keys. I don't know if they all work the same. Maybe I can take an F1 and use it over here if I lose this one. I don't know. We'll see. So the final numbered step is number six, and it's just to check this emergency shutoff. If uh, something catches fire, you got some other emergency, you just push it in, and to put it back into operation, you turn it clockwise, and it pops out, and you're good to go. Uh, they haven't mentioned yet, but I'm sure they will. 
this is the computer connection. Uh, it also has Wi-Fi. And this is a USB thumb drive port. So you can uh, get projects from Xtool Studio, uh, put them on the thumb drive, plug them in, and then you can use the uh, touchscreen controller uh, to run those jobs. Okay, so the power button is here immediately under the USB 3 port. They want us to power it on and set the language on the touchscreen controller. So that is a pretty machine. So we had to power up and supposedly set the language on the touchscreen controller, but it's already set. So it looks like we're good. Uh, so we're just going to get the computer set up and then we will calibrate these dots here and uh, move on with a uh, test project. Okay, the computer's connected and we've got our calibration card in the laser bed. But the first thing it wants us to do is a uh, update to the firmware. So we're just going to click and update. Shouldn't take too long. I went through these steps one time, but uh, something happened with the sound, something with my screen recording software. So I've actually got to see if it will let me calibrate for a second time. Okay, now we have this message to update the unfinished portions of the firmware that didn't complete. Uh, seems pretty important. So we're going to click update the unfinished. Okay, looks like it finished. So when you first connect the laser to your computer, if it doesn't auto recognize, you can select here and then you can select whatever laser you're connected. And Xtool Studio will um, control every Xtool laser. Like I said, I need to do calibration again because uh, something went haywire with my screen recording software. It happened to me last week. I didn't have any sound and then it happened again today. I thought I had it fixed, but I guess not. So, uh, the laser's connected. It's ready to go. I've got the calibration card taped to the bed so the edges don't pop up or anything. And then we want to go to the three dots, click device settings, down to parameter settings. And here you can see UV and blue light laser calibration. So we're going to start calibration. And we're going to start calibration again we're going to click next and the lids closed we're going to click engrave and then click the button on the uh, touch screen and it's going to put two marks on the car And then it should do a snapshot of the car. We're going to click next. And it did. So what it's asking us to do is to line these up. They look perfectly aligned to me. Uh, we're going to click auto alignment. I don't think I need to move them. And it apparently it moved them a little bit to, uh, to finish it out. So we're just going to click next. It's getting pretty sophisticated. Uh, now it wants us to remove the test card from the laser bed and then hit calibrate again so it can do it against uh, the flat laser bed. All right, cards removed. And we're going to click calibrate again. Let's click next and then it wants us to check the red and the blue dot to see if they're overlapped and they look overlapped to me 
So if they're not, be sure to click not overlap so you can go through the process again. We're going to click overlapped. We're done. We'll close this out. And since I've already done this, we're going to go home, get this job. This is the, uh, the test project that comes. If you go through everything step by step, this will pop up and you'll, you'll be able to do this. So I'm going to put a uh, anodized aluminum card in the laser bed. And then uh, you can see these presets. Click in here. You've got power 60, speed of 500 millimeters per second, 200 lines per centimeter, and a 40 frequency. So we're going to refresh the background so we can see our card and get things lined up. And that looks pretty lined up to me. We're going to click process. Start. And push that button again. And there we go. She's burning. Okay, folks, I understand parts of that was painful, but that was me. It wasn't the laser's fault or the software's fault. Here is the card that we got out of it. It needs wiping off. Hopefully, I'm not wiping everything off. But there we go. So it does a good job. And uh, I appreciate you folks watching. Uh, I assure you we went through every step. If you've got questions about anything, just let me know. I'm not an expert on it, but I have set it up once, and uh, I'll do my best to get you an answer. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, just check back often for new videos. There will be a lot of them on this, plus Lightburn, plus X-Tool Studio, the F1 Ultra, and even the old 40 watt. So we're going to keep going. Please keep coming back to check them out. Take care, and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.